I have always enjoyed Western movies. Um, if I had a confession to make to you, I've always been a big Clint Eastwood fan. I've loved all the Western movies, the good, the bad and the ugly and uh, all those great movies, which probably as a Christian you shouldn't. There's a lot of violence and everything in them. But I must admit, I have enjoyed them. And I've always enjoyed the showdown when the guys walk out onto the street and there's a showdown on the street and you know the good guy is going to outdraw or somehow defeat the bad guy and he'll just be quicker and it'll be finished and he'll then go and he'll have the girl, they'll get married, they'll buy a ranch, they'll live happily ever after. So I do love the great showdowns. But we are living in a time now where the greatest showdown that has ever been in the history of the earth is soon going to happen. And it is going to be fairly horrendous when God says, that is enough, that is enough. I am, my son is coming in incredible power and he's going to establish his kingdom totally on the earth. Every eye will see him. Every tongue will confess that Jesus, Lord, the great men and the mighty men are going to hide in caves and say, hide us from the fierce wrath of the Lamb, of him that sits on the throne and from the Lamb. So it's an incredible day coming. And I just want to look at this showdown for a couple of minutes and uh, maybe indulge me. But here is the, uh, a great picture right back in Isaiah, where Isaiah saw something in the future that really describes Jesus in his coming in his authority to deal out utter judgment upon the face of the earth. It says, Isaiah 63 verse 1, Who is this that comes from Edom with dyed garments from Bosra, this that is glorious in his apparel, travelling in the greatness of his strength? I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Why are you red in your apparel and your garments like him that treadeth in a vine vat, in a wine vat? And he says, I have trodden the wine press alone. And of the people, there was none with me, for I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all of my garments. Who is this? that comes out of Bosra, his robes dipped in blood. Tis I, says the scripture, mighty to save. There's only one mighty to save. It's the king of glory, the one coming in his dominion and his power. I love the stories here of some of the showdowns. Let me, let me go over uh, to the little book of Joel. And in the little book of Joel, again, uh, we read of this showdown and it's the Lord declaring and speaking and saying that there really is a moment now. There's that big moment, the day of the Lord. This is the final big showdown. He says in Joel chapter 3 verse 9, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. This is not talking to Christians to get strong. This is a challenge. This is God saying to the world that has blasphemed him, that are now under the, the reign of the Antichrist, that are blaspheming his name, that are worshipping the devil. He says, okay, okay, I've had enough. Proclaim war among all of you. Get ready. And let your mighty men rise up. Bring the best. Bring the strongest. All you who curse my name, who worship the devil, worship the Antichrist, you've taken the mark of the beast, you want to live for the devil and his hordes, come on up. Come on up and meet me. Come up here. Beat your plowshares into swords. You better get yourself armed. And your pruning hooks into spears. And you better tell the weak. Tell the weak, say, hey, I'm strong because it's going to get very serious. He says, assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened. Let the angels come down. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley 
of Jehoshaphat. The, the name Jehoshaphat means God who sits in judgment. Let them all come down to the valley where the God, where God sits in judgment. This is the great plain of Megiddo. This is this uh, area that runs from Bosra right to Megiddo. And uh, he says, come on down here. This is what's going to happen. And God says, put ye in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Come get you down for the press is full. The vats overflow for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and moon shall be darkened. The stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem and the heavens and earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the people of Israel. So shall you know that the Lord your God dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain, then shall Jerusalem be holy and there shall be no strangers and so on in that day. This is an incredible story. God says, come on, come on. Everything's coming to this point. I'm coming now. I'm going to clean things. This is the sheriff coming to town. This is the sheriff. This is King Jesus in his power coming to clean things up, to uh, absolutely shape and change. We have some, some other really interesting, um, in, interesting little bits and pieces here. Let's go over to the book of Zechariah and we read in Zechariah 14. Behold, the day of the Lord comes and your spoil shall be divided in the midst of you. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle and the city shall be taken, etc. And then in verse 3, the Lord will arise. He will go forth and fight against those nations as he did when he fought in the day of battle. I believe that 2 Kings 19 verse 35, when one angel came and in a night wiped out 185,000 men. But here it says he will fight as in that day, that great day of battle. And then his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst towards the east and towards the west. And there will be a great valley. And it goes down here into verse 9. It says, and the Lord shall be king over all the earth in that day. In that day, there will be one Lord and his name one. And the scripture goes on and it says, this is what's going to happen. This is what gonna, it seems that the armies will turn on him. They will literally turn on the king. And this is what the Bible says is going to happen. This is what will happen to the people um, that have fought against Jerusalem. We read here in verse 12, their flesh shall consume away while they stand on their feet and their eyes shall consume away in the holes and their tongues shall consume away in their mouth and there'll be a great tumult and so on. And the Bible says then that uh, it'll come to pass that those that are left of the nations will then come up to Jerusalem year after year. It'll be the, the great millennial reign will take place after this day. Friends, don't be deceived. Don't be deceived into thinking this is the devil's day. This is God's day. Satan needs to be terrified right now. He's going to do his best. Everything's coming to a climax I remember when I was a, a young man and we'd go out and shoot foxes every Friday night. We'd go out fox shooting in the country and we'd be up on the back of the ute shooting foxes and every now and again a fox would be shot and we knew he was over by a tree or something like that. And as you got over there to, to pick him up, because back then you, we would make as much money uh, from fox skins on a Friday night as I would school teaching. Um, with their skins. I'd get about a third of my wage per skin back in those days. And uh, so we would go over to the fox and if you got up close and he was wounded, that little animal would bite and gnash and, and absolutely be as violent as you could imagine um, towards you. If he fastened onto your leg, he'd rip the flesh off your leg. A fierce little creature because he was cornered and trapped. And I'll say right now, the devil has come with great wrath in this hour because he knows that his time is short because the great showdown of eternity is about to happen. And 
it is going to be an incredible day. I have been over with you in past episodes talking to you about the, uh, the great tribulation and all the stuff there. And we've talked about the gathering of the great army when the armies of the earth are going to come against the Lord at Megiddo. This massive army that's coming from all over the earth that are, that are coming to fight against the king in that hour that actually are silly enough to declare war on the eternal king of the universe. What a foolish, stupid situation to think that they can stand against the might of the great creator. But they will, and they'll come. Their great armies will come from all over the world, and they'll gather, and they'll meet in a place the Bible says called Armageddon. We've talked about this previously, but the Bible says that God will go to war with them, and there'll be no need for anybody to fight. And the Bible talks of the here in Revelation of the blood flowing to the height of a horse's mane for 100 and 1,600 furlongs, which is the distance from um, basically from Megiddo right down there to uh, where the Lord came out of Bosra. That's the distance from Megiddo to Bosra, and it will flow with blood to the height of a horse's mane. It is a horrendous time of judgment. The armies will be wiped out and the king... When he comes in his glory, he's going to come so majestic. The world doesn't even grasp what he's like. And I, I want to close this little, this particular section today by reading of the appearance of the great king because it's perhaps one of the most powerful pieces of scripture or piece of writing that has ever been written. So I'm going to, with joy, read it to you right now. After these things I heard... A loud voice of a great multitude. This is Revelation 19 in heaven. In heaven, saying, Hallelujah, salvation, glory, honour and power. They belong to the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. Because he has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth and her fornications. He has avenged on her the blood of the servants shed by her. And again they said, Hallelujah. Her smoke rises up forever and ever. And the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God who sat on the throne saying, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and those who fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it were a great multitude as the sound of many waters and the sound of mighty thundering saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the lamb has come or has come to completion and the wife has made herself ready. And that's you and I up in heaven getting ready. Our garments, white robes, we've made ourselves ready to come with him in this great moment. And to her was granted to be arrayed with fine linen, clean and bright for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, right, Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, see that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant. This is the angel here. Now I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. Here's Jesus. And he who sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood. Robe dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. The armies in heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him. On also on white horses and out of his mouth. And the armies of heaven, that we're with him here in white linen. Out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of almighty God and he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. When men cut a blood covenant, they would carve into their either their thigh or hand marks and often they would put it on their thigh marking at some sort of a mark cut into their flesh and then they would put like charcoal in it to leave it as a mark 
And then they would put their thighs together and let the blood run. And that was the mark of a covenant relationship when he comes. On his thigh is a name, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is the one coming and saying, with all of these that are coming with me right now, I am in a blood covenant relationship. An angel standing in the sun, he crowd with a loud voice saying to all the birds that fly in the heavens, come and gather together for the supper of the great God that you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses and those who sit on them, the flesh of all people free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth and the armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence by which he received and caused them to take the mark, etc. And the two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the rest were killed with a sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse. Whole armies wiped out by the sword from the mouth of him that sat on the horse. People blaspheme his name today, the name of Jesus. They don't realise the name that is above every name and the person who's above every person, that one day out of his mouth would be a sharp threatening sword that with it whole armies will be cut down in a moment of time. And then I saw an angel coming down from heaven with a key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand and he laid hold on the dragon, that serpent of old who's the devil and Satan and bound him for a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished, so on. What a mighty God we serve. I am so thankful today that I'm on the Lord's side. So thankful that Jesus Christ is Lord of my life and that I have accepted him. I'm so thankful that I know exactly where I belong. Do you know today? Do you know Jesus as your Saviour? Are you born again? Have you come into a living relationship with Him? Because now's the time. If you would like to open your life to Christ, why don't you pray this simple prayer with me today? Dear Jesus, I believe that you truly are the Son of the living God. That you died on a Roman cross covered in your own blood but that you're coming back soon for me. You died in my place. Please cleanse me of all sin. I give you my heart today. I give you my life. In Jesus' name.